There are many ways to add that va 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 boom to your garden that we're all wanting. This is the area of the garden that I really want to just add a bit of a snap to. There's a little pathway in front. Really, as you walk around the curving pathway, you're looking at a green backdrop. So what could we use? We could use an old wheelbarrow, one that maybe has got a hole in it or two, perfect for drainage. Keep that and plant it up or throw in a water feature. And of course, the thing that I want to show you today is probably one of the most humblest of items used in building. The concrete block, the most simplest of thing, this guy is called an M190. That refers to this over here, that's the width of it. The idea is that we're gonna be creating a feature wall using the concrete blocks and the cavities in the concrete blocks are going to be our planting holes. And now we must make a glass panel that will be part of our feature. So this is what you need, folks. It's gonna require wine bottles, and you know what? I've seen wine bottles used in a garden so amazingly. I mean, it's a recycling. You can take them like this, you can use them as edging, bury them like that in your garden. Here we're gonna use it in a concrete feature. The light in the bottles when it does shine through is fantastic because of the coloring, and I'm very excited to be able to use this. So, first things first is we need a level surface, and put down some black plastic, it just makes life a hell of a lot easier and then you're not damaging anything as well. We're going to need some pieces of wood. Um, we've used quite thick wood here. Garth, what is this? This is a, a roofing timber, Tanya. Okay. It's 152 by 38. All right. And it's CCA treated. So, we've cut four of these and the size of these is entirely dependent on how big you want to make the feature. So, we're going to show you to make this feature with eight wine bottles. These are cut in what length, Garth? This is 600, uh -huh. and then you've got two at 610. And this is how it goes. We're first going to make the frame. We're simply going to use some wood screws and drill it together to create a framework. So our box has been squared up, nice and secure. Very, very important. Next step is as follows. We've got a bucket of fine river sand. Um, I'm actually just going to pour a bit in here. Okay. And what we're wanting to do with this river sand is to put a layer of about five centimeters thick across the entire base of the inside of our boxing. Another thing, you just take your float, yeah. just give it a nice little tap all the way around. It's also important because it does compact. Because when you put your bottles down, mm. if the sand is soft, you can't dig it out. It's mm, just going to fall in. <laughs> Alrighty. Right, next up is when we get to use the wine bottles. Garth, there's a bit in here, just finish that off, please. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. This I'm on is... duty. <laughs> this is where you get to use your wine bottles now, and this is where you start placing them. You're going to take one wine bottle, and you're going to look at your distance. Work on approximately five centimeters, if you are following these measurements. But either way, you want a gap of about five centimeters on either side. That just gives your structure enough rigidity. And you're just gonna place the wine bottle to see how all of them are gonna fit in. So just place it gently on here. Garth, that's it, let's carry on. And also important that you don't have the join at the top. Where this join is over here, in, the, in your actual bottle, turn it so that that, you've got a nice clean surface. How's that, Garth? That's fine. Perfect, all right. Let's go with the greenie. Important that the lids are kept on, and we, you're going to re realize exactly why the lids need to be kept on in a minute. And then these guys are now going facing inwards, basically in the gaps. And the reason why we haven't pushed them in or anything is so that we can just move them across now to get our final spacing. What is most important is that they're not touching each other here, because we need the concrete that we put in, which is going to fill in the gaps in between here to hold them in place. Okay, now what you're going to do is just create a bit of an indent by firming it down. Push it down, push the bottle down. Okay, do that with each one. And you're pushing it down so that the neck of the bottle is just above the surface, your base surface. Okay, next up you're going to need a spoon. Garth, I'm going to let you do the honours. Okay. Let's start on this baby here. Okay, you're going to take away the bottle where the indent is. Look carefully now. Garth is just following the line of where the indent was with the spoon. Because your river sand is wet, it's easier to work with as well. And then scoop that out just a little bit, about a centimetre. That's the one. And then pop the little guy back in. When you do put it in, make sure that the bottle is at a slight angle. 
not horizontal. And you can see that literally because as you're scooping away, you're going to scoop a little bit more and deeper towards the base of the bottle rather than near the neck. So pop it in there. I'm happy with that at a slight angle. Lovely stuff. Stuck in at the top here. Right, now all of this bit that you've been digging out, like you've been a crab on the beach, you're now going to take that and put a little bit of it, the remains of it basically, underneath the neck of the bottle and that just gives it a little bit more stability. Once you've filled the rest of the, the sand that was left underneath the necks, then all you're going to do is take the back end of the spoon and where you've had some loose river sand, just smooth that down to get a nice even surface. Okay. Right, now what we've got to do is go and get our mixture ready so we can then start with putting that on for the next step in our awesome feature. All right, folks, we're using a very simple mixture here, very little stone, because we don't want this guy to weigh that much. Plus, we're only really holding glass bottles together. So, for this purpose, we are using our scoop as our measure. Now, remember, your scoop could also be a spade. It could also be just a trowel. We have got two scoops of very small building stone, which is basically a 12 mil. And then we've measured out four scoops of fine river sand. And our final ratio is two scoops of PPC cement. Then we just mix it all together. How's that, Carl? Oh, yeah, fine, thank you. Great, let's add a bit of water to this. Great stuff. And then let's just start mixing it all together. Okay, you'll notice, folks, that this is really runny. And that is what we want. This is like a sloppy yogurt mixture. Garth, I think we're good to go. That's perfect, Tanya. Right. Alrighty, Garth. Okay, so yeah. Now, folks, I've got the scoop that we were using earlier. It's going to make life much easier because it's a very wet, runny, concrete mixture. So, take a bit of this, take a bit of your mixture, and then we're going to start with the necks. And you're literally going to pour in between, just like that. Not all the way to the top, you just want to fill it up about halfway. That is halfway up the necks of the bottle. Okay, let's do that. Okay, now you can either at this point shake a finger or you can use the point of the trowel and you just work your concrete mixture in underneath the neck of the bottle. It's important that we're now getting it as close and as tight underneath this as possible. Now, in between, same thing. So basically, all the negatives, the negative space that you're left with once you put the bottles in is going to be filled with concrete. All right, now, this is the part where I want you to start paying attention. Where the caps are, and you are wondering why on earth we were leaving the ugly caps on the bottle. Well, this is why. Because we're going to be covering the caps so you don't see them. So, when you get to this point now, you want to fill it up to the point where right up to the neck when you cover the cap. So we're going to do that all along to all the others. Once you've done that, just neaten it off and now you're going to leave it to dry for about four to five hours. After we've left it for five hours and you can see that it's starting to dry and not being so tacky to the touch, take the spoon that you used once again and start carving on the insides of the bottle. So on either side of the bottle, you're going to start carving away using the spoon to remove some of that drying concrete. Final touches is that you're going to use a sponge just to clean it up. And if, as you're cleaning it, you see that you might want to carve a little bit more just to expose more of the bottle, do so because you'll be quite safe to make sure that this guy is going to look absolutely gorgeous. Right, folks, we've let this baby dry for two days. Now's the time to take off our molding or our boxing and let's take a look at what we've got underneath. There we go. And there you have it. Remember, we used the damp river sand and that is now kind of caked on there. Using just a block brush, so you're gonna remove the damp river sand and then we're gonna spray it off for one final look. 
Yo ho! Look at this baby! Check at that. Just with a bit of wiping down, using a sponge, spraying off the excess river sand that was on the back, you have an awesome, awesome feature. So first up, what we've got to do is create a bit of a level platform within this garden. Now, I'm not going to be taking out the border plants. Border plants are really important, especially when you're using any hard concrete or if you're using any hard building materials for that point. So we just want to clear out a little area over here and that's going to be the base of our platform. Garth, that should be all right? Yes, Tanya. Perfect. Nice, nice little runway that's been cleared. 500 wide, two meters in length. What we need to do now is get a bit of river sand, lay that down, use a spirit level to get our levels right, because remember when you're using anything that's solid, it might be a paver, it might be a concrete block, your levels always have to be perfect. Final prep for the river sand is to use a wooden float to tap it down and get it nice and firm in place. First up, we take our first concrete block, pop them down right there. That's good to go. Let's just check our levels. That looks great. And then we go with the next one across here. So I'm going to make an entire line of our concrete blocks as our base. This is going to be our first base. Remember, also check that you're carrying on straight. Right, now this guy, this concrete block, we're going to be putting going off here. Right, let me save the plant. Great stuff. Right, and now we start building up. So yeah, that's the one, Garth. Right there, perfect spot, just over there. Since we've put this concrete block on here, where the next one is going to fit, we actually are creating the basic foundation for how you build a wall. Where two join, you need to take your next concrete block and place it over it, because that is what gives a wall its strength and stability. And now it's time for that all elusive, beautiful glass panel that Garth and I made, which is going to fit into this awesome wall. Now he's going to fit in here. <laughs> Look at you, brother. That's the one. Okay, let's move him back a wee bit there. Let's grab a block there, and we're going to pop the block right on here. And then we're going to be doing another cross joint, which is going to be going across here, right across this joint. And as we're doing this, so it's going to be giving our wall stability, which is exactly what we need. Plus we've incorporated our feature, and now we're going to carry on along this way, creating more of our retaining wall. And on it goes, right here. Right, folks, the wall is ready for our potting mixture, which we're going to be putting in. Now, this is a plain potting soil from our local garden centre, but most importantly, it's the things that we've added into it. We've added in to each bucket a good two of these spadefuls of bone meal, and inside it, two of the heaped spoons of stock absorb. Now, stock absorb is a water absorbing granule, which will help with the concrete blocks and it's going to help this potting soil to maintain all its moisture. So all we're going to do now is take little spadefuls and start filling in. It's easier to do it this way. You are not going to fill the hole up all the way to the top. That's really important. Alrighty, Garth, you're going to do the pretty flowers yes, Tanya. for that side of the wall and I'm going to do the veggies on this side. Okay. And if you had filled it all the way to the top, you're then going to be digging this out. Now in here I'm putting the little bush beans. Grab a handful of this because then we can then start filling in. So one bush bean in here is going to be just perfect. Remember, bush beans don't get more than 30 centimetres in height. We'll spread out about 20 centimetres and where each one of these little flowers are, that's where your little bean is going to start. Most importantly, all they need is loads of sun and give them ample watering and feeding. We spoke about the lavender as one of the fantastic plants that we can use in here and they really are so incredibly rewarding. 
Remember lavenders, all they're needing is loads and loads of sun. If you've got sun and you don't overwater them, well then lavenders are the one for you. Um, I'm gonna pop a little guy in there. Now remember with lavenders, what can you do with them? Well, besides using the flowers as a garnish in salads, you can dry the actual leaves. So break them off like this. You could then take them, lay them on a piece of newspaper and lie them in the garage or well-aired place and wait till they dry. You can then use them in pot puris. You can also put them in your pillowcases because lavender, the oils and the scent of lavender is great to ease sleeping and tension. If you've got a headache, well, here you go. You take some lavender, put it on your temple and you rub it because as those oils start releasing, Oh, you just get that most amazing fragrance. Another great thing, if you've had a really, really hard day, you go along to your lavender plants, grab a few bits like this, take a whole bunch like this and hang it, tie it and hang it underneath the hot tap of your bath. And as the hot water runs over it, so it releases all the oils and the oils then go into the bath and you have this most amazing lavender scented bath. What more could anybody want? So there you have it, a feature in a couple of hours. Yes, of course, this did take two days to dry, but wasn't it all worth it? I mean, look how beautiful it is with the light shining behind it, an absolute magnificent feature. Remember, of course, you could take this, you could attach it to a wall, you could just put it somewhere within a planting or foliage planting where there's a gap behind so the sun can filter through. There are so many uses of this. Go out, try it, be different, and you will enjoy it. Thank you.